Hi, this is Jason, Chief Technical Analyst with Toro Alerts with your weekly market update. April's historically a really good month to go long in stocks, but clearly not the case this month. We've seen about an 11% decline in the S&P 500 just in the last 30 trading days. So the question is, will we see a short-term bounce from here or do we see the bottom fall out of the market? Let's dive into the charts and see what they're showing us. We'll start out with the S&P 500 uh, SPY chart. We had a really big sell-off today on Friday. Uh, and we did break down below a key Fibonacci extension level we've been talking about, which is at the 413.50 level. Uh, we are below that level right now. It closed on Friday at about 412. So uh, that's definitely a pretty bearish look, but we also did see a breakdown below that Fibonacci level uh, right around the end of February as well. And then we had a massive shoot, uh, shoot up to the upside. So the question is going into next week, will we uh, see a short-term rebound? and bounce up potentially a bit before a further correction. I think uh, most people would agree that we're probably expecting more downside from here. But the question is, do, do we really go short right now or is it actually gonna have a short-term bounce in, in the short term before a longer term uh, correction? So in the S&P 500, I would say, uh, as long as we're below that 413.50, I would be pretty bearish in the, for the broader markets. Uh, but again, we wanna be cautious as we could see a whipsaw going into Monday. And if we do see a big move to the upside above that 413.50 level, then uh, we'd want to be cautious with our shorts, at least in the short term. Uh, and then jump over to the NASDAQ. Uh, we broke below uh, what was potentially really a triple bottom formation earlier in the week. Uh, we did bounce off of that a little bit, uh, but then came back down pretty hard on Friday and broke through that level pretty convincingly. And so the NASDAQ's looking uh, under even a little bit more trouble than the S&P 500 is. And uh, our next Fibonacci extension level to the downside on the NASDAQ will be about 282.20. So we'll be uh, looking to see if it uh, gets down to that level and then when it hits that, whether it bounces up or continues lower. And then taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Averages, uh, also under pressure this week. Uh, it was really holding up around this volume support level for uh, quite a few weeks and then it fell apart this week and sold off pretty aggressively as well. So uh, really not seeing any of the major indices uh, showing any relative strength compared to the others. All of them are under quite a bit of pressure. So not seeing any uh, obvious um, indices to really focus on at this point. Uh, bottom side target I'd be looking at on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, at least in the short term, would be about the 311.60 mark, which is a Fibonacci extension level. Uh, if we bounce off of that, there could be some support there, uh, but there's a decent chance we could potentially be going lower as, on that as well. When we jump over to the Dow Jones Transports, uh, we still haven't had a massive failure in the transports yet. Um, I think if we saw uh, just a complete uh, flush out in the markets, we'd likely see the Dow Jones Transports drop below this 14, 345 level. So we'll keep an eye on that and see if maybe next week that falls apart. Uh, but most of the other charts as we're going to dive into uh, are looking pretty bearish. And uh, really probably the Dow Jones Transport might be actually the best looking chart uh, in the market right now, uh, but also not looking super bullish either. Uh, and when we jump over to the relative rotation graph and take a look at the different sectors and subsectors and in industry groups that we track, uh, you can see across the board it's nothing but red. Uh, it's been probably since the COVID crash that we probably have been, since we've seen anything like this. Uh, the best performing sectors are consumer staples, uh, home builders, and uh, natural gas fund. Uh, but those are all in the red at uh, you know anywhere from 0.3 to 2.3 percent to the downside. Uh, and then most of the other sectors have seen uh, just over the last two trading weeks anywhere from 10 to 20 percent decline. So. We've seen some pretty aggressive sell-offs uh, pretty much across the board, so not a lot to be long in this market at this moment. And then when we take a look at our Russell 3000 chart, we've been watching this one for uh, pretty much every week. We've been uh, talking about this. We talked about how when we got up to the top of this channel, we were expecting a rollover at least to the center channel. I think based on uh, the monetary tightening conditions and the geopolitical events going right now, uh, I think it's actually a pretty good bet that we'll actually blow through this uh, center channel line and maybe get all the way down to this bottom channel. Uh, and so uh, definitely looking fairly bearish uh, across uh, the broader markets as well. And when we take a look at the Russell 1000, our large caps, uh, we broke down a few weeks ago, I guess about a month ago, below that 50 week moving average. And uh, last week we talked about how we saw this breakdown below the 231.29 level, which is a key Fibonacci support level. It's held up pretty well really since uh, April of 2021. If we saw a clear break below that, then we thought that would be a pretty bearish signal, and we certainly did break below that this week uh, pretty convincingly, and so it's not looking very good for large caps at the moment either. 
And then when we take a look at the Russell 2000, the small caps, uh, we had a pretty tight formation where it was kind of hanging out here, uh, anywhere in between about the 193 to 210 level. And then uh, this week we had a pretty convincing break dip to the downside on that as well. So it's looking like small caps are heading lower uh, also. And typically when small caps break down to the downside, usually that's a pretty good signal that uh, a lot of times the markets will follow uh, the small caps as well. And then we take a look at the VEU, the uh, All World XUS index, seeing if there's any strength uh, outside of the United States right now. Uh, we did just get down right below the 200 week moving average, uh, which we're kind of holding, but not quite. It did close, it looks like, just slightly below. So next week, I think, will be really telling. Uh, we might see a short term bounce off of this level. Um, or if we do see a break further to the downside, then I think that would be a, a real bear, big bearish warning uh, for international stocks. And then when we take a look at inter international stocks emerging markets in relative terms to the S&P 500, I actually saw an interesting development this week, a pretty big move to the upside on relative terms to the S&P 500, which really all that's telling us is that some emerging markets uh, outperformed uh, the S&P, uh, not that they made money, but they just lost less money. And so uh, we'll keep an eye on that. If we, if we see this trend uh, continue to the upside, uh, then that might show that there's potentially some uh, other countries out there in emerging market space that might have some relative strength compared to the U.S. Uh, but as we looked at in the VEU, uh, the All World XUS index, uh, it's been to the downside really for about the last month plus. So uh, it's not looking like there's a lot of strength there, just uh, less weakness, I guess would be the way I'd put it. And then uh, when we take a look at our growth versus value, uh, value continuing to uh, outperform over growth, uh, but again, on relative terms, it's just losing less than growth is. Uh, really, everything is to the downside at this moment. Uh, oil charts is actually probably one of the best looking charts if you're looking for something to be bullish on. Uh, we have been kind of hanging out in this bullpen that we've been talking about for weeks now. Uh, but we are still hanging out in this tight formation. And so uh, my, uh, my expectation would be probably that in the next week or two, we'll probably see a resolution to this bull pennant. And if we break to the upside, then I'll definitely be looking for long opportunities in the energy space again. Um, but we want to kind of see the resolution of this because uh, typically bull pennants usually resolve to the upside, uh, but they, they don't always resolve to the upside. So we could absolutely see a breakdown uh, in the oil markets if we uh, saw it below this key level here. So uh, if we see oil close probably below about 95, 96 a barrel, uh, then I think that would probably be a little bit uh, biased to the bear side uh, for the energy sector. And we did see on the commodity space, a little bit upside momentum in commodities, but it's really been kind of chopping around a bit for the last few weeks. And as we've been talking about for the last few weeks, until we can see a clear break above the 313.70 level, uh, I really wouldn't probably want to enter any new commodity trades at this time. And then we've been talking about the high yield corporate bond ETF. We don't really trade this one a whole lot, but this is a nice uh, market indicator. Typically when the high yield corporate bonds fall below the moving average, that's a bit of a warning sign. And these are weekly candlesticks, so we can see that really the warning sign popped a few months back. Um, but we just continued pretty sharply to the downside. And then recently the key level we were watching uh, for a potential break for further pain in the markets would be if we got below the 79.50 level. And we clearly uh, broke below that last week, um, but just barely. And then we wanted to see kind of what happened this week with it. And it just continued to the downside. We actually did move back above that level at the beginning of the week. Uh, but it couldn't uh, hold and then it ended up selling off uh, pretty aggressively. So things in the uh, corporate bond market are definitely flashing some warning signs. And then when we look at on relative terms, uh, corporate bonds compared to treasury yields, uh, we watch this in a ratio chart uh, for market health as well. And if we broke below this uh, 0.66 level, then uh, that was uh, something we would consider a pretty bear signal as well. And the last time we did break down below that in February, that was when we had that pretty aggressive flush out before a, a bit of a correction. Um, and we did break down again against it this week. So that's looking like uh, more pain in the markets are coming in the future. And when we look at uh, things on uh, our one of our ratio charts, our consumer, um, Taking a look at our uh, consumer staples and the consumer discretionary. Uh, consumer discretionary is still struggling and consumer staples, people getting more defensive in the market. We're watching the 0.74% uh, uh, ratio on this chart and we did break down below that this week. So people are getting more defensive buying things like consumer staples, uh, healthcare and the more defensive sectors as opposed to the more risk on sectors at the moment. 
And then when we take a look at gold and silver, it's been a bit surprising, I think, for a lot of people. I think a lot of people assumed uh, that gold would potentially take off. Uh, I think I was one of them, but although I, I cautioned that really until we got above that 186 level, I wasn't too excited. We obviously did get above that very briefly, uh, probably about a month and a half ago, uh, and then had a big fail, failure off of that level. And we really have been chopping around in between the 174 to 186 level. So uh, I still think there's an opportunity for the, to the upside for the gold and silver market, but we're clearly not there yet. Uh, if you really wanted to go bottom fishing, I suppose you could put a trade on here right around the 174.50 level. Uh, if you're convinced that that'll hold, and there's a good chance I think it will. But uh, we could very much just chop around in the sideways range for a while on gold and silver too. So you might have to be really patient if you go bottom fishing on these. So I'm still looking for that clear break above 186 before I uh, go long on the gold sector. And similar story on, on silver. Uh, I've been talking about the 24.25 level as a clear, clear breakout in silver. Uh, we have not got, gotten there yet. We've gotten, gotten up there a couple times and failed both times in, in recent weeks. And we've had a pretty big sell-off in the last couple of weeks, going from 24 25 almost, uh, all the way down to about $21 an ounce. So same story with, guilt, uh, with gold. If you wanted to buy, try to go bottom fishing on this. You know, I think uh, it's probably pretty unlikely that silver is going to drop below, say, $20 an ounce. Uh, but you could also see some really uh, sideways action for quite some time. Uh, and we can see that essentially it's been trading in a range since July of 2021. So really almost a year now of sideways action and silver with not a whole lot of price action in either direction. So once again, if you're going to go bottom silver, it's bottom fishing on silver. Probably a fairly low risk trade, but you might get really bored waiting for the upside because, well, we know this could just chop around for, for months to come still. So I'm still really looking for that clear break above the 24-25 level before I get aggressively long in the silver space. And then jumping over to the DXY, our dollar index, uh, we've talked about how we've been fairly bullish on that for the last few months. And we've kind of called out some key levels that we've been watching and we just keep checking off each of these levels and getting higher and higher. Uh, we got up to the 103.85 level, which is that kind of next level of potential resistance. And uh, sure enough, we hit that and rolled back a bit this week. So going into next week and the next couple weeks uh, following, we'll be interested to see if we end up stalling out here and maybe trading in the sideways range for a bit, or if we do see a clear break above that level, the next upside target we'd be looking at in the DXY would be uh, about 107.70. And then we jump over to the interest rates. I uh, thought there might be a potential bond trade developing, uh, as we did see a bit of a cool off in the bond market a couple of weeks ago, uh, but that ended up being not, not being the case, and uh, we ended up seeing a uh, move to the upside once again in interest rates. So uh, interest rates had cooled off a little bit, but then took off the last couple of weeks, and two years back up to almost 2.75%. Taking a look at the 10 year, uh, we were watching a real key uh, 40 year trend line here that uh, looked like it was maybe uh, resisting up against, and we had a break above, and it sold off below. Uh, but then just this week, we shot right back aggressively up to the upside, and we're just under 3% on the 10 year now. So uh, interest rates still look like they're going to be rising for the time being. Uh, we've had some historic moves in the rate of change in interest rates uh, over the last few months. So a lot of people calling for a, a potential top at some point. Uh, but we're clearly not there yet, but we'll be watching that one closely because I think at some point we will definitely be getting some kind of uh, fairly aggressive rollover in rates. And when that happens, uh, probably a nice bond trade developing on that, but we're clearly not there yet. And when we take a look at the 30 year, uh, we are above 3% now on the 30 year. Uh, just uh, a month ago, we were at 2.4%. So again, even on the long end of the curve, seeing some uh, pretty historic uh, moves and rate of change in our interest rates. Uh, in the, in the recent weeks, in the last few months. And then we take a look at our yield curve. Uh, we are um, still above the zero line, but we are heading back down towards it. Uh, I think a lot of people are expecting that we will likely go back down and below the zero line, and some people think maybe it'll be a fairly aggressive drop below that. We've talked about the negative 0.22% as a potential even more extreme signal if we get below that level, or if we hit that level or go even further below it. Uh, a real potential warning sign for a big market flush out. Um, but we'll keep an eye on that going forward in the next few weeks. And then when we take a look at the VIX, the volatility index, massive moves with the VIX uh, over the last few weeks. And uh, we've been uh, hanging around the 30 level for, for a while now. And now we're just about getting up to 35 on the VIX. So these are pretty extreme levels. Anytime the VIX is elevated like this, we can see some really big fast moves in the market. Uh, 
day to day and uh, doesn't always mean it's to the downside. We can see some big volatility spikes to the upside in the short term and then another rollover, which is really what we've seen when we look at the S&P 500 chart. Uh, while we've been in a, clearly a bearish market for most of this year, we've had a few nice uh, rallies and a lot of times that's just due to uh, people buying a lot of protection and then we see a nice uh, short squeeze to the upside, but then we continue lower. So, uh, and when we take a look at the put call ratio, uh, that's telling us that there are a lot of people buying protection right now. We're at pretty extreme levels, uh, right at about 1.34. Uh, anything above 1.25 is a pretty extreme protection buying situation. Uh, and really anything above one is considered to be fairly elevated. And so uh, there's definitely a lot of people buying protection in the market right now. So I think a lot of people are positioned and uh, concerned about potential uh, further downside in the markets. And then when we like, take a look at uh, a ratio chart that we talked about last week for the first time, uh, we did a ratio chart of XLP, which is consumer staples, uh, divided by the S&P 500. And when we looked at this one historically, uh, anytime we saw uh, the XLP in relative terms to the S&P 500 break above the moving averages, that was kind of an early warning signal that we might see a correction. And then anytime we've seen it actually break above all of the moving averages, this top one, the purple one being the 200 week moving average, then that's even a further signal for uh, potentially more pain in the markets. And we just did break above that this week. So uh, last week we talked about how we were just right hanging out at that 200 day, 200 week moving average. So if we saw a potential rollover this week, it wouldn't have been that surprising, but we did push up to the upside uh, ever so slightly on that. And so things uh, are looking uh, very, fairly, fairly bearish on that as well. So unfortunately, not a lot of good news for, for bulls in this market, uh, but obviously there are opportunities to go short. Uh, there are some nice uh, inverse leverage ETFs that you can look for, uh, things like SARC and a few others that uh, provide some nice upside when the markets are going down. You can obviously, if you're an options trader, uh, buy protection if you're, if you're keeping some long positions open or you can just outright short the market right now. But definitely not a lot of great uh, long opportunities. I think it's really wise to be uh, doing capital preservation and, and being really intelligent with your uh, your risk risk mitigation in this market because I think that we're going to be seeing some further downside. Um, once we have a real clear definitive break below these levels, uh, as long as we don't get whipsawed back up uh, going into next week, I think there's quite a bit further downside. Uh, I think the next target we're looking on S&P 500 is about 390 to the downside. And then after that, I think we're looking at 359 and uh, we could potentially be going at even as low as 339.25, I think, on the S&P once this correction's over. So there's potentially a lot more downside in the market. So smart to be uh, cautious and make sure that you know what trades you're in and you're confident with the trade that you're putting on. Uh, and nothing wrong with having a little bit of cash on the sidelines right now and being, being a little cautious. So make sure to download the Tor Alerts app. Make sure to utilize the promo code and that'll get you a free month. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week.